Hello there, Pete Donaldson here from the world famous XFM. It's a pleasure to see you again. Here's your monthly roundup of video game fluff for you to feast your eyes, ears, and fingers on. This week we've got guns, blue things, and we've not bled them dry quite yet, Mr. Charlie Sheen. Since we last spoke, the video game BAFTAs took place in London's swanky park lane, where on the red carpet, dazed, feckless guests mumbled dull platitudes about an art form they cared little about. We are multiplayer ward, um, so we're excited about that. I know it's uh, one of the last awards of the evening. Listen, I'll tell you what, I think it's perfect. At the end of the day, I mean, video games on many occasions make more money than some films. Yeah, but so does heroin. Possibly one of the more surprising winners on the night was the PS3 exclusive Heavy Rain, walking away with awards for technical innovation, music and story. I say it walked away with an award, it probably just stumbled into the corner of a room due to a dodgy camera handle, then shouted Jason. That joke works if you played the game. Jason! No! <laughs> But don't worry everyone, the coming months look peachier than a big peach stuffed inside an even bigger peach then sprayed with a peach scented air freshener. This is going to be your gravest talent! Out today is the pumped up brawler WWE All Stars. It's got everyone you remember from your childhood in there and plenty besides and it's easily the best wrestling game I've ever played. Too much? Um, maybe just a little. The 24th of May sees Dirt 3 burn round the corner, spray filth all over a tree and then shoot off into the distance while a man inside shouts at another man while clutching a clipboard. The second one was great and if you're a rally fan, the developer's Codemasters should need very little introduction. Right, here are a couple of things that I've been playing this week, possibly in my pants, which for one week only will contain more visits to the comedy grain silo that is Mr. Charlie Sheen than any other video game review section on the web. Because drug addicts are funny. First up this week, Crisis 2, the sequel to the consistently beautiful but ultimately clunky Crisis 1, which came out in 2007. This time round, close quarter jungle combat is replaced by pacing around what remains of New York City in 2023. Which is a year that Charlie Sheen might not live to see the way he's going. Like most first person shooters, you're a man on a mission, tasked with retrieving information on both the current alien invasion and the Manhattan virus, the effects of which leaves its victims a quivering mess. Un able to function as a normal human should. Just like Charlie Sheen! Nano protocols engaged. Scanning primary. After a brief but informative intro, you're thrown straight into the single player campaign with just a talkative exoskeleton and a couple of heavily modifiable guns for company as you cut down wave upon wave of government soldiers and aliens known as the Ceph, who can leap tall buildings with a single bound and are also bloody hard to kill. That said, you've also got a few party tricks up your own Kevlar sleeve too. One quick button press makes your skin as battle-hardened as Charlie Sheen's nostrils, another makes you as invisible as his self-restraint. And weirdly, for a series most famed for its graphical exploits, the first thing you really notice about Crisis 2 is its music. The main insertion theme is incredibly stirring, uh, composed by Boris Slavov and Tilman Selescu, with a tiny bit of assistance from the legend that is Hans Zimmer. You might almost say that the music was written by two and a half men. And the bottom line is, it's an absolute triumph in every possible way. Certainly on the PC version, the controls once learned quickly become second nature, the customizations levelling up easy to get your head round, and the set pieces are as squeaky bum inducing as anything you'll see anywhere else. In short, get down your shops and pick up a copy for crying out loud. And you better get there soon, because Crisis 2 is going to be flying off them shelves like Charlie Sheen at a drugs party. I'm not doing it anymore. And if you can't be bothered to get off your sofa and want something that's just as engaging, you could do way worse than a game called Swarm, available on Xbox Live and the PlayStation Network. 
a playful little puzzle action game. Your job is to guide a load of little blue folks from the left-hand side of your screen to the right-hand side. And unfortunately, these poor little sods seem to relish getting blown up, burned, sliced up and impaled at any given moment. This whole exercise being a real callback to the needs of the many ethic of games like Lemmings from back in the day. Coming in at just over a tenner, it's a colourful world with an inky black heart, revelling in slicing and dicing your charges and actively rewarding you for it at every turn. All in all, well worth a tenner and it's out now. And with the powers vested within me by a 100 quid video camera and a passable Virgin Media broadband connection, here's a game from the past that you really should have played, you big idiot. 1987, what a year. Cesc Fabregas had just escaped from his mum's guts and Rudolf Hess had just done the decent thing and done himself in. Times were a-changing. And what the world really needed was an isometric puzzler involving two dogs trapped in a confusing monochrome maze, shooting donuts out of their faces and collecting things in a bag. And thus, Head Over Heels was born. Following the successful use of the Batman license a year earlier, John Rittman and Bernie Drummond put together an interesting title where two playable characters with two distinct skill sets could work together to solve simple puzzles across a sprawling game map. One dog thing called Head could jump higher and shoot the aforementioned baked goods from his face, whereas Heels could run super fast and carry objects. Wonderfully surreal, almost Dali-esque at times, and a game that borrowed a lot from stuff like Night Law, but gave a lot back as well in its charming very British execution. So well done, Head Over Heels. A star, top of the class. Stop firing donuts out your face. And as we're nearing the end of this little episode, let's have a look at some frankly cataclysmic bad video game box art. In at three, this National Geographic wildlife quiz thing. He's an idiot, she's an idiot, so is she, and he's seconds away from showing a testicle. In at two, the title says gang fight, the picture says gang bang. Mm-mm, right on. And in at one with a bullet this week, I'm the bad cat. Don't make a game about shit you can't draw. So that's about it for another month. I've been Pete Donaldson, and like I always say, London is warm. It's the only sign language I know. <clears throat>